So we're joined today by my colleague Wayne Dewsbury, uh, one of our more experienced advisors in the team. Thank you. <laughs> experienced. He's old. Um, and we thought we'd just kind of touch on today um, the differences in terms of getting a mortgage and how easy it is and how long it takes uh, in today's uh, environment compared to um, a few years ago when you started off. When did you start off, Wayne? Uh, July 1983 July. the day I joined Nationwide as a trainee manager, yeah. The days of uh, Culture Club? Culture Club, yeah. Uh, Paul Young was in the charts. Wherever I lay my hat, that's my home. Okay, well you didn't stay there because you ended up here, so that's good yeah. news for me. So, um, so we thought it might be interesting here in terms of how, how the process worked, how long it took years ago to get a mortgage compared to now. Um, so let's start there then, when. how would the, the home buying process work for a customer? Would they normally come and see you before they'd found a house, or how did it work then? Yeah, the, the, I mean, the market was dominated by building societies. Mortgage brokers, per se, barely existed really. Um, financial advisors concentrated a lot more on pensions and things like that, investments. Um, so you'd go direct to your building society, you'd typically wait a while for an appointment, you know, you might wait a few days or weeks before you could even get an appointment. Um, the big thing was that the funds were restricted back then. So um, you might have your mortgage appointment and the, the lender would check you out and make sure that your earnings were what they wanted to be and everything. But then you might have to wait several weeks or even months until funds became available. Um, so lenders would issue what they called letters of intent. So that they'd say, yeah, we will lend you the money one day, but it might be three or four months time before we've got any money to lend you. So, so they couldn't really go ahead and identify a property before they'd had that letter of intent, or they couldn't really proceed on that process because there was just no money available. Correct, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the, the overall process probably was a lot longer, just because of the, the scarcity of funds. Building societies were restricted in terms of they could only lend what they took in over the counter. They couldn't go to the money markets like the banks do now and raise funds on international money markets to then lend to the customer. So, as I say, scarcity of funds was, was much more of a thing and we used to have quotas. One of my first jobs was going to the drawer on the first of each month, getting all the files out that, that we had the money available to lend, making all your mortgage offers on the first of the month and then anything that you'd run out of funds for went back in the drawer for next month. So yeah, right very, very different. And I, I suppose people might be surprised that, um, it, that it was the Bill Society's lending and so the high street banks that we know kind of today existed. but back in the sort of, I'm not taking you right back to the 60s no. way, but no. in the 60s and 70s, they, they weren't money lenders. No, not really. The, you know, the, the high street banks really concentrated on, I suppose, the, the commercial, you know, the business side of things and, and tended to leave residential mortgage market, you know, out of it. Um, I'd say back, back when I started, you were never competing against any, any banks as such. Well, you weren't competing at all, is the honest answer, because, you know, um, it was a, it was dominated by a cartel of building societies. They all tended to work together, set very similar rates. So competition really didn't start to come into it until probably the late 80s, when uh, some new regulation came in. It freed up building societies to deregulate. So you had the then Abbey National converted into a bank. They were the first to do it. Um, and that started to then kickstart competition between lenders and remortgaging and, and that sort of thing. So on that point of competition then, um, so, the, so the applicant comes in, best suit and tie, takes a day off work, yep. comes, to, comes to see you and I guess they've got to open an account with you in yep. Build Society. Yeah, typically you, you wouldn't get a mortgage unless you'd been a saver with that Building Society. Again, typically for six months before you wanted a mortgage, you needed to have been a saver. And the idea behind that is that, um, is that you could then evidence as a lender um, that the customer is able to save with you each yep. month doing what they said they were going to do and yep. then if you're a good lad we might give you a mortgage in six Correct. months time. Absolutely yeah, very much that. And, uh, but then um, what about kind of these days we're used to price comparison websites and mm. customers having a, a wide range of products, um, what would the products look like in terms of the bill societies? There weren't products as such, you basically had a standard variable rate. The Building Societies Association used to meet every so often, um, I can't remember how often is the honest answer, but they would meet regularly and basically set a rate and all the building societies would 
basically go along with that rate. Um, so you had standard variable mortgages, and that was just about it, really. And then, um, so, so no one was able to, so that the this, um, aspect of fixed rate mortgages where customers can budget without mm. going for a long time, yeah. that wasn't really there. So yeah. um, so what your mortgage payments would be each month was largely depending on on, on what this committee of lenders uh, agreed, and yeah. also what was happening in the, in the wider economy. So, so what would happen to people's monthly payments on a monthly basis there? Um, well, again, you, you could see and, and you could see a significant change, either up or down. In fairness, depending on what, obviously, the, the, the Building Societies Association would be influenced by what the, the economy was doing and what the Bank of England was doing, but they were also influenced by how many people were saving with them. Um, but yeah, it, you could see, you know, wide fluctuations. Typically, you would find probably on average maybe four or five times a year there might be a, a, a change. Um, the other, th the other big thing back then, of course, was that um, most of the building societies calculated interest on an annual basis, whereas now it's daily. So things like overpayments, for example, now we encourage customers, if you can overpay, you'll benefit from that. Back then, you didn't benefit from any overpayments until the end of December when they recalculated the balance yeah. ready for next year. So lots of things have changed massively. Okay. And then uh, in terms of the application process so the customers would bring in um, I don't know their ID or yeah. pay slips proof of income yeah. um, now we would just upload those documents into lenders systems for, for the underwriters to, to look at and check that they match the application how was that different in terms of that process? Again we, we would look at pay obviously when you first did your in interview you would look at things like pay slips very rarely asked for bank statements um, but we would often then it would that would just be the start of the process because um, we would write for a reference from your employer to make sure that you were you were working there and you were still going to work there. We would write for a reference to your landlord to make sure that you've been a good payer of, of your rent. If you were a customer looking for a new mortgage that already had a mortgage, we'd even write to the other lender for a reference from the other lender to make sure that you'd not been in arrears. Obviously, credit scoring uh, didn't exist. So pros and cons there, isn't there? So. Um Okay, so you've got to think then that customers weren't getting paid directly salary into the bank, then they're getting paid cash or in or Very in, often or it'd be cash, way. Yeah. So you've got that, um, but the, the lender would be open to, to, to fraudulent applications and, and that's why you were writing for yeah. references to corroborate what the customer was saying Correct. was was accurate. Yeah. Um, just a, a completely different way of, of doing business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, total change you know the, the speed was never an issue let's put it this way nowadays it's it's go 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 and, and we need to turn things around as quickly as possible understandably but back then you know it was you'll get it when when we're ready um, and you'll get it when we've got the money and you'll get it when we've written to the world and his wife to check you out so the, the convention process it's still a bit antiquated today yeah. but I'm just kind of trying to work out this period of going to see the the bill society to get pre-approved save with them for six months identify a property go into the conveyancing process it sounds like to me that this process could take up to a year oh, to it, buy a house yeah it, it, exactly if you were right at the start thinking we want to buy a house the first thing is right where are we saving our money mm. and if we or have we even been saving because we need to start saving first we need to have a building society savings account and you know so you'd need to plan that ahead before you even get as far as an interview, because if you've not been a server, you don't even get an interview, sort of thing. Now, the the managers of the of the bill sizes, like you were in those in those days, had mandate to lend, yeah. so they could sign off on, ca on cases. Yeah. Um, again, sort of quite different, and pros and cons here. Yes, you got that human intervention where the bill society can get to know a customer much deeper, um, build up that relationship, and then. Uh, uh, Put a common sense um, argument yeah. behind much more discretionary. I think that's, but but now it's it's kind of set criteria and, and, and credit scoring. So mm. I guess kind of pros and cons here because um, you might go in to see Wayne in his branch of one building society, get one outcome, yeah. and then if you went to a, another town or city, you might get a completely different yeah. outcome. So there was no uniformity of those decisions. No, very little. It uh, very much was you know down to the if you like, the, the approach of the individual manager in any given branch, as, as you say. Um, 
it definitely had some advantages. You know, if there was something unusual with your particular situation, you could explain your logic behind why your situation was actually um, a positive thing, and somebody would make a judgment on that. Um, the, the negative side of that is, if you're if you're talking to, from a lender's point of view, if you're talking to somebody who doesn't make very good judgments, then you know from a lender's perspective that could lead to some you know poor uh, decisions and obviously ultimately then accounts that went into arrears and so on and so forth. But in terms of the credit scoring, uh, there wouldn't have been much to credit score because in, no. uh, because through the sort of 1980s when you were getting going there, people didn't have the, no. the credit cards and car finance yeah. perhaps like they've got today. No, that's right. The, I, uh, again, I, 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 admit, I wouldn't know the stats on it, but the amount of uh, unsecured debt, for example, that exists now is probably you know many many times more than it was then. People just generally didn't have it. You know, it, there was a lot more. It was save up for what you want to buy. You know, rather than buy it on credit. And then did people become frustrated by the length of time all this was taking? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I, you know, I think people, if, you, if you've set your heart on buying a house, you want that to happen. And I think definitely it was a frustrating time. Um, but having said that, I suppose it was all anybody had ever known. So I suppose you learn to live with it. You know, in the same way as today's customers who were used to quick and slick, you know, um, they're used to that. And if they don't get that, then then that's, they're outside the norm now, so yeah. Yeah, fascinating. So um, hopefully that was uh, of interest to you. Um, uh, the market has evolved, things do work much more quickly now, um, whilst we might have our own frustrations about sort of credit scoring. Um, I think there, there have been big leaps forward in uses of technology um, that lead to, to quicker outcomes, whether those are better or worse, I guess. Um, remains on the individuals and, and, and their outcomes. But uh, thank you, Wayne, for that. Fascinating, uh, fascinating uh, thoughts from Wayne there, and I uh, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching the video. Um, we do rely on user generated content, so please subscribe if you found the information useful and send me a question in the comments below or drop me an email and I'll do my best to answer it.